morning. Welcome to Yellow Door Urban Homestead. I am Asia and I'm an urban gardener growing in a small space in my backyard. And so today, someone asked about how I fertilize my garden. And so I'm gonna go through, start to finish, how I fertilize my garden. I'm gonna go through which vegetables I fertilize, things like that. So I'm just gonna tell you what I do. Um, there are so many ways to fertilize your garden, but I'm gonna show you how I do it because it rained last night and it's actually a perfect time to fertilize my garden. Um, once, while the soil is wet, I've said it several times, when the soil is moist, that's how the garden pulls up the nutrients from your fertilizer. And so I try to fertilize after a rain um, in most cases, but if we're not getting rain, I don't have that option. I just get my soil pretty moist and then I go ahead and fertilize. But this time Mother Nature did it for me. <laughs> so one of my favorite fertilizers is not gonna be what you think. It's compost. I love to top dress with compost. It seems to work really well. Um, and so when I originally start my garden beds, um, even when I'm amending for the beginning of a season, I originally begin with compost and then I put a granulated fertilizer in. I use garden tone mostly, but I'll use anything um, because for me, fertilizer is fertilizer as long as it has a good NP and K ratio. And NP and K is nitrogen, potassium, and phosphorus. Um, and so nitrogen is good for uh, the green growth uh, to get your plant growing. Phosphorus is good for flowering plants and potassium is good for, I believe, the roots. Y'all can go look that up. <laughs> <laughs> Either way, you want a good N, P, and K um, for your granulated fertilizer because that's going to break down throughout the season. Um, probably sometime in July, I will go back and, and kind of work this into the soil, just the top layer, to get it to start breaking down for my fall vegetables because I plant sometime in August, early September. Um, the other thing that I like to use is fish emulsion. So I use fish emulsion pretty much all season long. There are a lot of other fertilizers that you can use that have a more balanced N, P, and K. Um, I just see that I have decent growth with fish emulsion. Um, my plants are green, the flowering plants still flower, still produce, and so I am attempting this year for sure not to use a lot of different fertilizers uh, because I used homemade compost to start the garden. Um, that's what's in my bags. It's mixed with like the soil from last year and the compost from this year. Everything seems to be growing just fine. So um, there are other fertilizers. Um, and a liquid fertilizer is what you want to use for immediately feeding your plants. Uh, liquid fertilizers are water soluble. Once you dilute it and you feed your plants, then your plants are actually able to get it right then and there as opposed to granulated fertilizer where it needs to have time to mix in with the soil and mix in with the moisture and break down so my opinion granulated fertilizer to start your bed to feed it uh, throughout the season but for immediate feedings um, I would use a water soluble. I use fish emulsion, but there's Agro Thrive, Neptune's Harvest. There are all different types of fertilizers you can use. Um, I've used them. Um, I don't know that I used them long enough to know if they were making a difference or not. But I will tell you, fish emulsion is a good thing for me. I like it. So we got compost. <laughs> we have granulated fertilizer. We have liquid fertilizer. And then there are plants that need a specific type of soil. For instance, blueberries. That's the one I'm gonna to speak to because that is the one that I uh, have in my garden. <laughs> <laughs> and they like acidic soil. And so in early spring, and only once in a year, I fertilize them with hollytone. So hollytone is meant for like azaleas and things, I believe. But it acidifies the soil. And, and that is what I have always fertilized my blueberries with. And this year is the first year I got a really good harvest on my blueberries, but I've always gotten blueberries. The birds just eat them. <laughs> so. How often do I fertilize? When I first plant out, I like to fertilize with fish emulsion every week. Um, it's giving my plants a boost. It's giving them what they need to start to grow. Um, and so I do fish emulsion every week. I try <laughs> to do fish emulsion every week. Um, sometimes I miss it, 
Sometimes I don't. And so I try to fertilize with fish emulsion every week. Um, also, I do, I will do a top dressing of compost if things look like they're struggling. So if you were here a little while ago when the peppers were like really yellow, you remember that's what I decided to do for the peppers in the back of this bed, the peppers in the back of that bed. And then I just decided I'll do it for all of the garden. <laughs> because compost is filled with a lot of organic matter and nutrients. And so if you see that your garden is struggling, if you see that your soil is staying really dry, compost is a good option to amend with, to give the minerals to the plants that they need. It's a good option to amend your soil so that it will hold more moisture too. So at the end of the day, compost is a really good way to amend your garden and also to feed your garden, fertilize your garden. Um, you know. It's working on the soil and and so that's what I do I do enjoy I do love it's one of my favorites <laughs> compost is one of my favorites but anywho we're gonna go ahead and use some fish emulsion today to go ahead and fertilize the garden um, and we're not gonna fertilize everything also you know what else I have I have comfrey tea that we made together in another video and so I may use that on my tomatoes and my peppers um, that are in the bags I'm still gonna fertilize the full beds with a uh, fish emulsion because I have peppers in them and I have uh, zucchini and squash in, in them as well and so those are heavy feeders that's a good thing to know too which plants are heavy feeders you can google that um, heavy feeders are going to use a lot of the nutrients in the soil and so I'm still gonna use my fish emulsion to go ahead and and fertilize them but you're gonna be surprised at just how much I fertilize it's not a lot um, it's not a lot because you're not fertilizing each individual plant you're kind of feeding the soil if that makes sense so I just want to get the fish emulsion onto the soil into the soil and the plants can pull it up from the soil around it I'm not feeding directly in the beds anyway the actual plant I'm gonna show you <laughs> So we've had this conversation before. <laughs> Two gallon watering can. Filling it with some rain water, cause like I said, it rained a lot last night. And so I have water that I can use coming straight from mother earth. <laughs> okay, so one thing to remember is follow the directions on the container now. Follow the directions on the container. Don't follow the directions that I'm about to give you right this moment. <laughs> I don't know where my measuring spoon is. I've been using this for quite some time, so I can kind of eye it. If you are new, follow the directions on the container. Giving your plants more than the container says they need, not a great thing, don't do it. Um, however, I'm definitely gonna pour this directly into that and call it a DAY. I do count, I count like to three. So I say one, two, three, and then I stop pouring. I don't know where my spoon is. <laughs> When I fertilize my root vegetables, I won't use the same amount because it says that you're only supposed to use, I wanna say one tablespoon to a gallon for root vegetables. So I'll count to like one, two. I won't count all the way to three. Hey, look, <laughs> I'm doing what I can. But just just for, for new gardeners, do it as the container says you will eventually learn or you'll just use it the way that the container says but i will say follow the container instructions we're not feeding each individual plant we're feeding the soil so this is all i do that's literally all i'm gonna put in this bed um like i said i try to do it every week when they're newer um, once they get a little bit older and they, you know, got their footing, maybe every two weeks, um, I will do it. Sometimes I don't do it at all. I do it when I remember. <laughs> Y'all asked for this video. Just remember that. <laughs> well, at least one person <laughs> asked for this video. And I'm being as honest as I can because I work a full-time job. Um, I have children. I still try to have fun. I have friends. And so the garden thrives. <laughs> even in these conditions I put it through. <laughs> so if you want to garden, just give it a chance because listen, 
plants want to grow. So many YouTubers say that, and it is so true. Plants want to grow. If you give them, you know, a portion of what they need, in most cases, they're going to grow. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and uh, go ahead and fertilize this other bed, and then I'm gonna show you how I use the comfrey tea. This is probably like my third time using comfrey tea because I need to get enough comfrey to like have it sitting around. I was hoping to use only comfrey tea this year, but I don't have enough to just have it sitting around. <laughs> Let's finish fertilizing with the fish emulsions, y'all. So the strawberries, I don't fertilize them any more than the beginning of the year, like in spring. They only get fertilized once. I'm getting them a second round of strawberries. They are much bigger this time too. Like they were pretty nice size the first time, but they're much bigger this time for my second round. Um, so we're not gonna fertilize the strawberries. We're not gonna fertilize the blueberries. Those get one feeding in my garden a year. Okay, so now we're going to move on to the comfrey tea. Like I said, I've only used it uh, maybe two or three times so far. Can't say whether it worked super well or not. Um, hopefully next year I have more and I can use it more. Um, but essentially, we're going to fill this maybe uh, hmm, three-fourths full and the rest will be comfrey tea because it has not been sitting long. I think I maybe made that tea two weeks ago at the most. So we're gonna fill this maybe to here and the rest is gonna be comfrey tea. Oh, nope. It's the broken one and it's also the half tea, uh, tablespoon. Anywho, <laughs> uh, comfrey tea is a tea made from a plant that you can grow in your garden. It is a plant that will also uh, spread in your garden. So if you don't have a lot of space, you'd want to put it in a container. Um, in my case, it's over in the orchard area because I want my orchard area to just kind of be wild and I'm okay with it spreading. If I ever move, I'm sure the new owners won't be okay with that because it's like in the middle of the yard. Anywho, um, that's what it is. It is a plant that has a very, very deep tap root. And so it can go down into the earth and get nutrients that other plants aren't able to get. So it's a good option from what I have researched and what I've heard uh, to fertilize your garden with. So we're gonna fertilize. I'm looking over here because my wild borage, <laughs> that wild borage needs some tending to. You see down here, that's borage that's fallen over in the rain and the storm yesterday. From what I hear, it was pretty windy. Um, I wasn't here. I don't, I don't work where I live, if that makes sense. Um, and so I wasn't here, but I'm looking, and it has fallen all over. We're going to have to straighten that up. Um, but let me show you. I added compost also, like just a, a little bit of compost to my comfrey tea. That's additional nutrients. Um, and, you know, once the water gets to it, it starts to break down, and then the nutrients goes into the water. So um, I'm going to show you what that looks like. So if you were here when we made this, you remember me saying you can put a uh, brick on it to hold the pieces down. So that's what it looks like. <laughs> also, it smells just like it looks. It smells disgusting. <laughs> so we'll go ahead and get some of that into the measuring cup and then I'm gonna show you. So that's what it looks like. I think this, like I said, maybe two weeks, three weeks at the most that I made this. Um, and so I moved the stuff at the top to the side and that's how I was able to get just the liquid. And so we're gonna pour that into the measuring cup. Oh my God, it smells so bad, y'all. Into the watering can and we we'll mix it up. If you only let this sit for like a week, um, you don't really even have to dilute it. Um, it. It's once it's set for a while that you wanna dilute it. I'm diluting mine because I can't remember how long it's been sitting. <laughs> Anywho, um, so we're gonna go ahead and fertilize all the peppers and the tomatoes that are in pots with this comfrey slash compost tea. And if you watch other channels, uh, they like, I wanna say it's not aerated. It's this thing that makes bubbles that they use to make their comfrey teas and their compost teas. I don't do that, I just let it sit. I, I, I just don't do it. Um, I think you still get nutrients, 
I'm not even sure what the reason behind doing that is. I don't want to tell you that I do because I don't. I'm sure there is a reason though. Um, if I could find a channel, because I think I remember a channel that does it. Um, I will link it in the description because then you can see another way to fertilize and make comfrey tea. <laughs> So when I'm fertilizing my bags, I count to five. As I'm fertilizing it, I count to five. One, two, three, four, five. And that's how I fertilize the bags. Seems to be working for me. So as it relates to the orchard area, I'm gonna be honest, I don't do much fertilizing in the orchard area. Um, I have to learn the trees. I, I didn't fertilize the trees at all. I put compost on them, but they have fruit on them. Well, the peaches have fruit on them. <laughs> Sometimes if I'm feeling generous, I may throw some fish emulsion over on the herbs, but I really don't fertilize the orchard area much. I'm thinking maybe I will give the grapevine a little bit of compost tea. Honestly, I'm not sure how to fertilize any of the fruit and the herbs pretty much will do their thing and grow. <laughs> As it relates to the beans that's down here with the cherry tomatoes, they get fertilizer when I fertilize the tomatoes. I don't fertilize my beans much. Look at these beans though. They're growing. I got beans coming. I could probably harvest that one. But anyway, the beans are growing y'all. Not the ones down there, <laughs> but at least they are green. <laughs> So those are, they're, they're going to come. They're going to come. I'm just going to end up getting a later harvest of them, I'm sure, which is fine. Um, the potatoes, I did give the potatoes some comfrey tea. Um, I am sure they're like really coming to the end. Um, they're still green, but I think in the next few weeks, they're going to start to lay over and die and we'll be able to harvest some tomatoes. Um, like I said, with the strawberries, I don't fertilize them again. The blueberries, I don't fertilize them again. Um, the, the flower bed, I fertilize with comfrey tea. And I believe that's about it. Oh, the herbs over in the pots over there by the chicken coop, I didn't fertilize them at all. Um, they're doing really well without fertilizer. And so that's one thing that you wanna pay attention to too. As if there are things that look like they don't need fertilizer, they're not densely planted, you don't have to fertilize your garden. If your garden is doing well without it, you don't have to. It's money that you may be spending that you don't need to spend. So, if I missed anything that you are interested in, please leave it in the comments. But I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to like, share, subscribe. Don't forget to visit me over on Instagram where I post about the things going on in the garden almost every day. Bye, y'all.